So, <laughs> after the diagnosis, oh, it, it, it gave me a big blow. A big, big blow. You know, it's one thing speculating something. And it's another thing when you're told and conf you have it confirmed to your face that this is it, right? So you initially you are pushing towards getting to know the answer, and then after that you get to know the answer. You are confused. You're in denial first. You're like, is it this really, really, really? You know. So it it took a toll on me a lot because I was scared for the child. Um, nobody wishes to have a child who has special needs. Mm -hmm. And and our worry mostly, and I'm pretty sure so many moms will be able to relate. Like what we fear most is how they would be able to live their lives to the fullest without your support most of the time, because you are hoping to have a child who can be independent at some point, you know, in their lives, not be dependent on you as a parent for a considerable amount of time in their lives. So it's it's that worry now gone up again. My name is Aska Mora. I'm a mom to an uh, to a, an autistic son. Yeah. And take us back to when you learned that your son something was wrong with your son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I've always felt like something is wrong from um, around uh, four months there. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some things that were not sitting right. So this is how. Let me just take you back a little more. Yeah. When I was pregnant, um, I had there's this craze about having an app tracking your pregnancy, especially if you're a first time mom. Mm -hmm. So I downloaded a few apps and looked for the one that works best for me yeah. to um, what to expect and one called Ovia. So those apps were helping you track your pregnancy throughout um, from then till breastfeeding and so on and so forth, like afterwards. And so, um, I was checking through diligently what is happening to my body, what's happening to my baby, checking what needs to be done, right? Uh, and so after the pregnancy beat and when he was born, there were some milestones that it was telling me he needs to have achieved by each month. So those were not coming, not all were coming true. Mm -hmm. And so it got me worried. Also, another thing that kind of made me expect some of these things is because um, I'm a firstborn and I have um, three brothers who are like way younger than I am. And so I took care of them for some time, for, or for the longest time, right? And so um, that also kind of gave me a rough idea of what to expect. Um, some things that he was doing or not, the things you would expect would be happening to other kids. I also had um, kids his his age group who we were trying to see and match most of these milestones with, and yeah, I just felt like he's different from around four months going onwards. Yeah, yeah. When you noticed that there were some delayed milestones, did you do something immediately? Um, uh, how? What was your response? Um, no, mm -hmm. honestly, no, because um, most of the time when you're a first time mom, as much as yes, you've gone through that process of um, caregiving, um, getting to take care of your siblings or whoever, maybe other kids in the process, you still are skeptical about whether you're doing the right thing or not. So you still keep second guessing yourself. You're not so sure whether this step is the right one and you'll keep consulting. You consult your mother, your aunties. Most of the time, you'll get feedback that is contradicting. Mm -hmm. You not always get <laughs> information that <laughs> makes sense, yeah. like to help you make a decision. And so I would ask them, I'm seeing something that is strange. What do you think? And they'd be like, Pussy Jali. Yeah. One would tell you, Ay, that's strange. Another one would tell you, No, there's no pressure. You just keep going. Um, it's just a delay. Most kids go through that. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really make much of it, but I was documenting everything I'm doing. Um, well, I actually have a YouTube channel and I had started documenting my journey from when I gave birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank God for that, because that way I was able to also document what I was doing then. And now I can kind of 
merge and relate with what was happening then and now because yeah. you know of forgetting stuff mm-hmm. and in that process i was researching a lot and i was learning that there are things that you know if they're not if they haven't achieved by you know uh, a certain time then you have to start questioning or you start to, you need to start digging deeper but in the african setting of course you're expecting guidance from older people to help you through with it mm-hmm. and um taking that action immediately wasn't something i was i did because of course i was second guessing myself throughout the whole time mm-hmm. and then at what point did you decide you know what mm-hmm. you guys and your feedback and this have enough is enough i want to see a specialist Okay so um over time I think after a year because I was really waiting to see whether he's going to walk he delayed with walking mm-hmm. and um so but then when he started walking it was around 1 year and a couple of months which of course some kids also get there which wasn't a big deal yeah. but he had started steaming and those reflexes had started really early from when he was like around that 4 months here yeah. and so um when i decided to go ahead with that whole process is when we went to church okay i go to the sda church and you know anyone who knows sda knows that we are uh, a church that has a specific way of doing things right and so um it was that time when we had gone there and we were doing like an outdoor kind of service because of covid and they had put speakers around and of course at home at home we don't have speakers so we don't have loud music and all that um so when we went there when people start singing especially with the mic of course the speaker makes it magnifies the sound he would scream and you know close his ears and it's something i've never seen other kids do okay so i thought maybe this is a bit strange so we take him away from that and you would hear many people talk about that being strange and you'd register that and you know go back and start wondering why did they say that strange um also slightly after that we had a friend who had a birthday uh, who was turning a year old and um she had invited us to a party and the party had uh, music right and kids were playing all around and from the onset he didn't want to get into the party because of the noise as well he was closing his ears throughout and screaming and uh we had to leave um because he kind of was throwing a tantrum so you see those small things uh with the sound also getting irritated him getting irritated to the sound when you sing other kids are okay with it was um quite strange and the songs that were playing were kids songs so it was so something that you'd be wondering why that is happening uh he was avoiding um kids around him at the time uh because well we are not a big family so he's not used to having people around him and a uh, church and other places like those are places where he can interact with other kids and uh part of the things that uh also made me think that hey something is different and we need to do something about it is when he gets to meet other kids he starts um being kind of close uh, yeah mm. and um he doesn't really want to interact with them or maybe he's crying around a crowd of kids or maybe a crowd of people so that those are those things that were making me feel like hey i need to start um pursuing this and then also i took him to a school but not a in a school setup i was actually doing um working with them for a project I was consulting for them and at the time um he was around 2 years old and i thought why not let me just take him there and hang around with uh, having hang around with other kids because at the time my nanny wasn't around and um one thing i'm really thankful for is that i got to interact with that, that head teacher who knew that who knew about autism and um what she did is i think she had she dropped something and then he kind of didn't you know respond to that um thing being dropped because that of that sound and so there were some things that she was speaking with the steaming and all that and she told us hey we need to 
kind of explore this further and find out what exactly is happening with him um the earlier the better it doesn't hurt to try yeah yeah and was that the point where you visited a specialist yes actually that's the first time i visited a specialist although we did um we did kind of consult with pediatricians when you get to the hospital there were those questions that you keep asking the doctor hey i'm seeing something strange what do you think and the doctor tell you no nah, there's nothing really major about it so but when the head teacher you know kind of showed me that we need to pursue this she gave me a number for um kise to be able to reach out to them and book an appointment for an assessment and that's the very first time that we did something about that yeah yeah when you got there what was that process like when you yeah. got to kise mm-hmm. um actually i really love the experience because um it was the first time that you're seeing or kind of seeing things that make sense things that you were worrying about is and you get, you're getting solutions to most of, to most of those things because upon registration you're seeing the way um other kids are also coming in how they're being handled and you're seeing kids who look like how he's behaving right and it's starting to dawn to you like Hey, you've not gotten the answer yet. But you're close. <laughs> But you're close, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um also what I loved about Kise is the fact that they ideally what they were meant to give us is um give us the educational assessment yeah. Mm. Not like the the one that you're given by the doctor or something. So what they did is they kind of helped us get further to the solution and uh most of the things that they were doing setting him up into a room to kind of see the triggers and see if he's going to be reactive to them all those things they did helped us to get answers to the questions that we had and whoever was assessing him i, I don't remember her name well but um there were some questions that she was asking us that you know kind of helped us become more inquisitive um uh, research more for another visit if need be um we also got to get recommendations for his diet most of the things that we need to adjust that we were not doing correctly that we actually did not know we were doing correctly so that visit was the best thing we did yeah mm-hmm. and would you say um the diet was there some things that you were feeding him that were um, triggering um, mm-hmm. a reaction or a meltdown mm mm-hmm. Yeah, actually what um I noticed before as we as he was growing up and before he even did the assessment is that of course you'd see there's some things that when you give him he gets constipation, sometimes he um has stomach aches. So I also have issues like those myself. And so I would relate that to maybe, you know, I have it so maybe he has it. You passed it. You know. Yeah. Yeah so those allergies um I was hoping maybe it's just that I also have it and maybe he can he might have gotten that from me mm. um I'm also lactose intolerant so milk at any point from when uh he was a baby he couldn't take milk or even formula so I breastfed him three uh through to two years and a couple of months uh, fully so he didn't take formula we tried and he couldn't tolerate it then milk as well all those things wheat when he takes wheat he gets constipation there and then so most of those things are things we had already started practicing by the time we got to kise to get to know that information we didn't know that it's making him hyper we just thought it's going to make him better because those are the recommendations they were giving us um most of the things that we expect would make him also hyper the sugary stuff biscuits maybe juices are things myself i don't take yeah. so he, he doesn't get exposed to them in the house most of the time and uh i felt like at the time i was so green with dieting with the diet issues that maybe you would know that would trigger his hyperactivity or make him calm and all that but then it started making sense why some of these things were happening to him after mm-hmm. we got to get that listing of what we're supposed to give him and the things we're supposed to avoid yeah mm-hmm. so at kisa did you get a diagnosis immediately ama you were told to go and then you wait for a diagnosis mm-hmm. so we got the diagnosis immediately 
uh, they gave us they actually gave us uh, an assessment right the uh, a verbal one right it wasn't a documented one they told us to come back the next month I remember when we did it it was um, 19th of December and it was that point in time when people are traveling almost Christmas so they had booked us for a review in like two weeks time after New Year's just so to try and see how we are doing if there's need for us to do um, for them to refer us to Kenyatta to get now the official diagnosis and so over time calling them they asked me to just pursue taking him to school first and then we can review that later yeah. and see whether we need to like get a doctor to do the assessment so yeah. when you went back now that's when they sent you to a doctor uh -huh. Amma, they still tried to assess him some more no so after that um the move to t to take him to a doctor to get assessment was actually mostly because of social media influence uh -huh. because uh, when I took him to Kisi he was two years old and then we after that we didn't go again it, it took us like a year I think almost a year to kind of um, explore further because I was giving him time in school mm -hmm. for, to try and see if he's going to change some of these things that we were being told um, would make things better maybe because of the crowd and stuff he'll be able to get used to it and then now you know with autism if it is there it is there you yeah. would still get it in future so we're just trying to give him time um, and see afterwards then we can pursue getting a doctor um, to assess him here yeah. mm. um, so what are the kind of what you're saying social media influence what are these things that now to made you make the decision to visit a doctor okay. is it a channel was it somebody mm -hmm. or content what kind of content Okay, so what happened is, um, I am very, it's called research something, research oriented, <laughs> research -oriented. yeah, so um, after that I did a lot of research, I actually took a break from work for a while, um, after, in fact, just to take you back a little bit, before um, I decided to now kind of get more information about autism, I was mostly just speculating and keeping it to myself not really pursuing it much and so um, after that now I started doing like intensive research on it um, just to get to understand what I need to do myself personally because he was still young and uh, I felt like and also well uh, the lady who had assessed him had said that uh, most of the things that would make sense right now is the environment he's in and so kind of changing those things and making them better uh, would make him live a better life for now as we are trying to pursue it better, uh, more and see if it's going to be to get the level of autism that he has right and so all that research of course gets you to people within or around your circles that know about autism and um, another thing also that got me there is when I shared my last video on YouTube after like clocking out um, many people reached out to me people who of course would know someone or already have someone in their lives but probably hadn't shared before decided to share at that time uh, they gave me information about where to get stuff uh, who to talk to numbers for doctors and psychiatrists and anyone who can be able to be of assistance and also groups as well so from there that's when I got the there's a group on Facebook that has lots of followers um, it's called Kenya Autism Alliance on Facebook that's where I got now I joined and then like there's so much information there that you get you ask anything you get your answers there good thing is that it's a kenyan based group and so questions that are affecting us in terms of diets uh you know the society here where to get what within nairobi or elsewhere is easier answered in a kenyan group i also joined some groups uh in the states and others in the uk to kind of just you know merge the info in case it's something new that you learn you can also share with the people that you have mm -hmm. also um, later on now I've been able to get more groups to join mm -hmm. uh, through the roof uh, there's one called inclusive education um, all that is I mean 
without those groups i don't feel like most of us moms would be able to have our heads afloat honestly yeah yeah i'm curious about mm-hmm. your visit to the doctor uh-huh. and how they assessed you and like like that process for someone who's wondering mm-hmm. if i go to the doctor today mm-hmm. what am i expecting mm-hmm. that assessment to be like mm-hmm. yeah if you could take us through it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so um the assessment that we did we with the doctor now because um here we normally have assessment as you know just assessments but uh it's best to understand that there are different types of assessments some are done by therapists before they start engaging your child and doing therapies OT and speech, speech therapy in your child uh you may think that is enough in terms of assessment and say you're good to go but then um you really need to get you know a professional a neurologist or um i also got to uh, see neurologist stroke um child psychiatrist to be able to kind of see if um there would be a possibility of having ADHD because they are kind of linked especially with hyperactivity since my son over time has really become hyper like it's grown over time yeah. so uh i also needed to pursue that So with the assessment now um with the doctor the neurologist or child psychiatrist that are going to see at Kenyatta uh what you expect is not like um maybe some procedures being done what they do is they observe the child's behavior and uh ask the parents the questions they ask uh they give you scenarios and ask you how you know he goes around it mostly it's feedback that they get from the parents and um i feel like with that kind of assessment they really need to have a parent who has spent yeah. time yeah an intentional parent exactly yeah. has spent time an intentional parent who knows exactly what the child eats anything um probably that is not uh, because there's a lot of information out there so whatever you issue is what the doctor runs with and um so that's exactly what they do they don't do like procedures if um i was expecting to yeah. maybe maybe do have a scan done or something mm-hmm. no that is not what happened yeah. it was just that and yeah and then they give you a report on the same mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so now from there is when they give you like a written document mm-hmm. okay. so they give you a written document where i saw that they would do a situational kind of um exposure for the child is kise um they expose him to an environment where now with different sensory stuff to try and see how he'll react around it yeah. how he'll embrace it and yeah from there also they can be able to you know tell whether he's sensory sensitive or avoiding um which also i feel is important especially for you to kind of get that bit of uh the behavioral um you know aspect of each child. Mm. So after receiving the diagnosis mm-hmm. are there aspects of your life that has changed mm-hmm. or that you've intentionally changed mm-hmm. to accommodate your son? Yeah. And um how I I I I don't know if I I took it well. I don't know if I <laughs> if I um I I I handled it the best way. but uh the, the which question did you ask me when you come up for <laughs> other skin you like the left cell the the, the oh, things that you need to accommodate it's okay you can go on because mm-hmm. also now mm-hmm. before you accommodate you know you have to go through the grief mm-hmm. process mm-hmm. you have to grieve mm-hmm. the expectation of having a neurotypical child mm-hmm. to um now accommodating your neurodiverse child yeah. like how long did it take you to like process the True. diagnosis mm i can say it took me like almost 6 months um to kind of you know process it all then after some time i feel like it took me a year because it goes in in phases right um also having to kind of answer yourself for because sometimes you feel like there's something you did wrong so you kind of go back and try and see what you did wrong and where you'd have changed things or what would have caused it most people are obsessed with the cause of autism um and so 
you would be asking yourself is it like maybe I took too long to go to the hospital and so on and so forth so all those things make you beat yourself a lot keeps you in that state of denial um, before you get to acceptance so I think it took me almost a year and uh, there are so many things that I had to adjust in my life um, many decisions that I had had or maybe plans that I had had then I had to change them a complete overhaul mm -hmm. because now you have to think about incorporating you know a list of expenses changing how you live you know the environment needs to be conducive for him as well so there are things you needed to change although for me I felt like with um, you know how we've lived so far or maybe whatever he's been eating so far are things that we've already been um, doing right so it wasn't so hard kind of adjusting to that but uh, the main thing of course you want to be intentional more intentional with what you're doing so the toys that I was bombarding him with <laughs> you, <laughs> you know I had to change that yeah. I had to make sure it's educational stuff um, also I had to be intentional with his interaction with other kids and you know kind of make it consistent having like um play dates because sometimes you're so busy to engage um him with other kids for his benefit so we had to incorporate that as well um taking extra care of his health because autistic kids are um i feel like they get sick a lot yeah. i don't know how to explain that but they get sick a lot they are um I don't know if their immune system is lower or I need to get to, to get to know more or maybe consult the doctor about it but I feel like they get sick a lot and that means you have to make sure that those things that make him sick don't happen over and over again right and that means you have to make sure you create or maybe um, buy the things that he needs to make that happen give him what he needs right supplements and all that so in terms of cost, it's gone way up. In terms of lifestyle changes, yes, my lifestyle my lifestyle has changed. Number one, because I barely have time for my friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now it's me and the baby most of the time. Uh, I spend a lot of time at home now with my boy. Uh, and if it's going out, I have to go with him because I have to think about him first um and see what environment is best for him before i can choose that place so it's no longer about what i like most of the time honestly it's about what is best for the baby and um and as a caregiver as a mother sometimes you kind of get lost in that and you forget yourself um i'm, I'm i think I'm, I'm i'm trying to kind of also balance that off right now mm -hmm. thankfully because i got to the stage of acceptance um, at that point in time when I was still in denial, nothing like that was being achieved. It was way, way off of, um, I was just considering him a lot, worrying. I was more into the worry and sulking stage rather than accepting and knowing that, hey, you also have to be, fill your cup to be able to pour into his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you, would you say, do you experience caregiver fatigue? A lot. A lot a lot um, just to merge that a little bit with um, what recently has happened to me um, you see when you are a, a caregiver and you're also working right um, juggling those two things is a bit difficult so being able to give your all to your work and also being able to be there for your child right also being able to monitor or kind of uh, oversee what happens with the baby with the caregiver that you have maybe at home is also something else so you your mind is always everywhere right you kind of want to make sure you have everything covered that is exhausting in its own way and uh, especially in those points when he gets sick it's overwhelming because of course you also want to make sure that um, while you're there you have other things also running right and sometimes you have so much planned and autism teaches you patience and <laughs> and not to 
always have everything by the book because sometimes you may think you have something planned and uh, it doesn't work out for you so it brings you back a couple of steps that's equally exhausting for you so I feel like most of the caregivers and especially if you're a working mom props to you because this is not easy <laughs> it's not easy working and, and taking care of an autistic baby yeah. um, they are very clingy or they um, sometimes they just want to be with you and if you're not able to be there with them or put your emotions aside and focus on work it's kind of difficult to be able to juggle the two because you also have to work at the same time you can take your child to work right <sighs> yeah it's it's exhausting honestly um, are you able to know like you know when you're feeling the fatigue it also manifests like um in various ways mm. so are there times when you're able to know the way i'm feeling i'm having a fatigue episode can you pick it out when it's coming mm. how do you feel yeah i actually do pick it sometimes and sometimes the people around me tell me yeah i'm blessed to have people who i think also see what or kind of preempt uh, with what i'm going through what exactly i would be able to you know lash out at the end of the day so when they see like those signs they give me time <laughs> yeah. because uh, at the same time you know as a human being as a caregiver you also have um you know, your own emotions to deal with um sometimes you have your own things you're dealing with and to top it up with um that bit of worrying about autism on its own it's 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 on another level yeah. so getting a team or maybe not a team but a supportive system uh family friends who understand that and don't put that burden of uh prioritizing uh friendships and prioritizing you know let's say partners you know mm-hmm. that's another thing because it puts you in a space where you can be able to handle that better you can be able to even get well before you get to that point in time when you you're broken at least you can you can bring yourself together mm-hmm. and uh yeah. they also give you hope they give you that support they give you um they kind of push you and tell you hey you've done better this should not make you feel any uh less of a mother you know and having those people is very important i feel yeah. um yes that point that you know you feel like you're having you're almost having that meltdown they're having <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we 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 do get there we try as much as possible to keep the best people in, within our circles because those are, those are the people who uplift you at the end of the day mm-hmm. so um have you started engaging therapists okay let me take take mm-hmm. that back mm-hmm. um now your son is four are there milestones that he's yet to achieve mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes um there's some milestones that um we are working towards he's yet to achieve them so many of them especially ones relating to school you know um handling his his emotions better speech he hasn't um started speaking yet he's singing <laughs> mm-hmm. uh but then he's not speaking um what else i think most of that is and also the fine motor um where he cannot be able to feed himself with a spoon he just uses his hands throughout sensory processing mostly those are milestones we are still hoping to have achieved um we the good thing is also having kids his age and trying to match most of the things that they're doing to so that her. yeah mm-hmm. to mirror that to be able to know how far you are also is is, is also nice because yeah. you have kind of a, a virtual checklist that you can be able to work with and yeah i feel like those milestones we we are getting there yes they are not be, they have not been achieved yet but we are getting there and are you enlisting the help of therapists yes we are mm-hmm. Uh, we've recently started off like uh, engaging a therapist fully therapy is expensive i know <laughs> <laughs> therapy is expensive <laughs> in this nairobi <laughs> yeah. wow so mm-hmm. um the reason why i took long 
being or maybe I took long engaging a therapist because learning about autism and getting the diagnosis was done early enough mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. but now what was stopping because I am um, we are advised to do it early early intervention is the best mm-hmm. but you know early intervention is not free <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> it costs you good yeah. money mm-hmm. and um you can have a plan yes you can get the best people to do it but uh, sometimes you find it's a bit difficult being able to raise the funds for that and doing it consistently because with it you need to do it consistently mm. um at that point in time when you drop off you have them regress so yes now we started fully doing therapy um right now we're doing intensive therapy and then after that now we're going to make it less intensive So how many therapists like is it speech are you combining mm-hmm. one or two or are you just doing one at the moment mm-hmm. we are, we are doing two mm-hmm. we are combining them um a day we do speech another day we do OT okay mm. and um um would you say you can see progress am i still too early to tell mm-hmm. Yes. Ah, from day one we were seeing progress uh with the therapist. He had a lot of issues with sensory processing and that's the first thing that he was tackling with OT and with the fine motor skills. Um I was trying to be the therapist for some time. <laughs> and some of these things I I noticed uh these things I don't know whether I'll be able to have him achieve them. Mm. But now engaging a professional is nice. because that way at least they know how to manage and handle him and get him to have that concentration span that you need because with them they have a short concentration span and you want to make him um kind of stretch that a little bit over time and so um we've been doing i feel like for every day that he does therapy there's progress on progress or every single time this therapy so it's like building up like mm-hmm. small small things that mm-hmm. build up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's a gradual process mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. um and school have you started to take him to school mm-hmm. or how is that like yeah so we started taking him to school uh this year the other one was more of like play group in that sense of playing uh and so seriously um I was able to get him a school that is a normal school. Now, let me talk about this further. Mm. Like um having an autistic child and getting a school. That's the question I wanted to ask. Yeah. <laughs> is another thing, yeah. you know, because yeah. most of these schools don't accept kids who are autistic because of um the time that they think they're going to spend on him or her. So This one that I got I was very scared. I even thought not to mention that he's autistic <laughs> when we were going to register. And uh eventually I had to do it because the teacher had noticed some of the things that are not okay or maybe not, you know, mm-hmm. the same as what other kids are doing. Uh so once he was registered then I had to tell them. Of course ready to get their feedback whether hey we can't handle this you have to, you know, uh mm-hmm. get him off, but they were very very supportive. I'm very thankful for that school honestly because <laughs> eh, the struggle the struggle of getting a school yeah. we had tried like uh two more schools there's a condition of course every single time you go there you have conditions that are coming in you mm-hmm. must bring this you must have this you'll pay m- this fee um you know not the same fee as other kids and uh of course you know with autistic kids they'll have a different diet not different much but maybe a diet that when some when they're having this maybe it's substituted with this other thing those things also some other schools tell you hey we can't handle that as we just want the the mm-hmm. you know neurotypical, neurotypical child, child. Mm-hmm. yeah and another thing is that schools that are special meant for special uh, kids like ours very expensive um of course you have the intention of doing that the first time you're doing it you want to get him there um you know school that has special needs teachers probably has therapists uh in there as well like it's an all inclusive school right but the cost that comes to that um is a bit of a stretch for most parents mm-hmm. especially for play group when you're starting off yeah 
would you be if you were told to quantify mm -hmm. the difference in pricing mm -hmm. um, for school fees? What is the difference if I was taking a neurotypical child and your son is autistic? Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like figures, we look find the math. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's like four times. <gasps> yeah. So if I'm paying four times. Okay, four wait. Times so price. it's forty k. So I'll pay. Yeah. Four times. It's just like four times. Forty times four. Yes. Yes. I had a school who gave me a quarter of, of almost um hundred and fifty thousand for play group. <laughs> yeah. And so, in that, Nini, is a therapist coming to the school? Am I yes. Just... Yes. Uh, what they what, do? What was the package? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the package is, I think, mostly what is adding up to all that because they'll have a special needs teacher, and of course the ratio is minimal, right? So maybe a teacher to maybe four kids, and then the environment that they've created there is more of a sensory um, environment for the kids, and then what else? Uh, the diet is something else that they say that they've customized. Then uh, they engage therapists to come in. So the different schools will have either maybe do three sessions in a week for the child or two sessions in a week, depending on now the package that you pick. Yeah. But still, if you can't afford say, therapy every week, that's mm -hmm. still a num and a leg. If someone at home can't afford therapy, then over there it's too yeah, it stretched. Is. It is, it is. Yeah. And then also most of these schools, again, um, one thing that is also a challenge for us parents is we not all areas in Kenya are sensitized about autism, and so not all schools even understand what it takes to handle an autistic child. Um, so when you find these schools, you find these schools concentrated in a specific area. So if you're staying away or to a diaspora like us, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, yeah, it's 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 a struggle. Mm -hmm. You end up getting. Maybe just one or two, and it's that, that or nothing else. Yeah. So I feel like also having that, you know, having these conversations mm -hmm. of making, um, you know, just making this curriculum yeah. friendly for autistic kids and making this whole thing accepted in a way that all schools can handle inclusivity is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So based on your journey, like mm. since your son was born mm. to where you've figured, mm. what would you say as a parent of an, to an autistic son? Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> a there's thing. a lot. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot. Mm. Uh, there's a lot with autism in itself, right? We normally remove the autism from your child because it's the autism you're dealing with, right? So sometimes you might feel like that autism in a kudi, you know, because it's not something anyone would want on their child. It's something that is, um, for you, first of all, difficult to handle. Most of us don't even know how autism, what autism is in the first place. By the time you're given a diagnosis, you have no idea. You start now looking back, looking for Google and checking what exactly autism is. That exposure is not there. And um, another thing is family and um, just people around you. I feel like that, what's it called, people not being aware about autism is costing us a lot because just that bit of being aware that this condition exists can make life very easy for us. Um, if I can just share um, an instance that I've had mm -hmm. lately, like I, I, traveled, I traveled uh, recently, and what happens is this when you're traveling with your child, or when you're just outdoors with your child, the stairs you deal with, <laughs> ah, people look at you strange, right? And sometimes if you're sitting with them for a long time, especially if maybe you're on the move, maybe you're traveling, and people are just there staring. It's quite uncomfortable. Because at the end of the day, um, I feel like most people don't understand. They kind of peg autism to be something really bad or probably someone is, uh, maybe there's some so much negativity to it, right? And if only people would be able to understand that, hey, this is just a condition 
you know it does, it's not pegged on on someone you know um uh, someone as as that person right um it would make life very easy for us caregivers because you know the discomfort that comes with that makes us also or maybe also makes the kids um anxious and makes it hard as caregivers to have a good day <laughs> you know on the normal yeah. and um people also being accepting of the fact that there sometimes you'd uh, have a child have a meltdown in public and it cannot be so good on uh, whoever is with that child sometimes and you might find that person is also emotionally drained by that meltdown and sometimes being kind is helpful because most of the time you're going to be dealing with that for a long time so just being kind to someone who is going through that is um very helpful for whoever is handling the child um also that um idea of probably because autism has no nobody knows the cause of autism and sometimes you might find that people think maybe autism is um related to retardedness or autism is related to maybe um maybe the parents being a certain way or maybe um you know those things that people may be kind of peg autism mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. um because it's very difficult to know what causes it and having that conversation of what did you not do <laughs> what did you what did you do when you were pregnant or oh, before you got to yeah, or as, before, a young girl. as a young girl <laughs> you know those questions yeah. <laughs> they kind of make you feel really you know down mm. especially as a mother because you're like i tried everything you did all the supplements you're told to take uh, you're also questioning it you don't know so revisiting that grief because it's like grief right yeah, yeah. you yeah. grief not yeah. having a neurotypical child exactly mm. so revisiting it sometimes is heartbreaking if um people can be a bit more kind you know having that conversation it's going to be more helpful and serikali eh you will never it's it's an arm and a leg it's an arm and a leg mm. it is and not every parent can do homeschooling not every parent is skilled to do so and autistic kids normally don't listen to the parent too much yeah, that's true <laughs> and you're when you're doing school work So you try until where you can but sometimes you have to engage you know a professional yeah and yeah. it's quite expensive having an autistic child the food they eat the diet getting the gluten free stuff is also equally expensive um having this um what's it called the personal disabilities um you know benefits if we can include more benefits to that uh it's going to be very very helpful for these kids because mm-hmm. as they grow they really need to have the conveniences that other people are having yeah without having to feel any less of a person or to pay extra or to pay extra mm-hmm. because most of the time you're finding um kids who are going through these things um are not um able to gain access to most of the things that they can to be better So if we have maybe support from the government or support from uh w- from you know grants and all that it's going to be helpful for us. Mm-hmm. Kenya has a long way to go. A long way to go with with autism mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because even information you really have to look for this information. If you're not proactive, you might end up having a child for so long without having to know what you need to do about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So information is not easily available it's not talked about as much it needs to be something people are having conversations about because autism is now becoming not popular but we are getting more and more people talking about it now rather than other people back in the day kitambo would not hear about autism much would um, you say it's because people are continually getting a diagnosis and then they are more mm-hmm. willing to speak mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. 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 That's true. Yeah. Because uh I think most people also um were living in probably may- maybe I can say living in the dark, you know. 
you do not really know what exactly is going on if you go to a doctor right now because you see me at the point in time before i got the diagnosis the doctor was telling me my child is okay there's nothing to worry about he was very healthy they were doing blood counts in the nini <laughs> they're telling me the boy is okay you don't worry he's okay you know he's healthy if you get someone who runs with that and says this doctor has told me to talk or sour um you may just relax and say it's okay mm. sometimes you may take him to school you don't know what is happening in school probably um he's not performing much but you'll accept that he's not performing much and let him be mm. or let her be but they are really having difficulty adjusting to society mm. then um i think that this having more information from the diagnosis that are being done now uh people are more aware right people who have gone through it are sharing their stories more it should keep going that way yeah. mm-hmm. i think also there is a part where mothers also mm-hmm. now need to also like trust their instinct to mm-hmm. you feeling mm-hmm. something is wrong with my child but oh doctor and i'm going to talk about cause but my kid is not okay mm-hmm. and so you insist and emphasize until you get the attention you need mm-hmm. so that you're able to get her diagnosis early enough mm-hmm. and hence early mm. intervention yeah i agree mm. i agree because honestly if you ask me most mothers who okay most mothers who go through or maybe who pursue this whole thing and get to the bottom of everything are mothers who are very they go hard you know they want to understand what this is mm. and if first of all if you are not a proactive maybe you don't want to get the answers to everything and also maybe you don't get people around you who also are very you know uh they want to really know what's happening you might just give up yeah you know so i think that also is another thing do you have a disability card for your son not yet uh i'm actually in the process of getting one we we had um registration that was happening around my area but i had i was away so i'm going to re- to like include him in the next registration and yeah. see um if he can be able to get one actually now that we're talking about that i forgot to mention about medical care mm-hmm. <coughs> because because autism um is quite expensive to deal with of course yes you have diets to work with you have um you know that whole immune system thing that we're being told but insurance is I feel like um there is a seclusion in autism or in conditions that you know are concurrent with what autism comes with uh not just autism but um the different conditions you know other than autism that um affects most of our kids right now and adults as well I feel like um uh, there's so many insurance companies uh, you know in Kenya and if if um we can have all this information or probably have a customized uh way of having this package for parents like us for us to be able to access therapy um covered fully not having to go to our pockets to get most of these things done for our kids i mean would have a better the kids would have a better life would have better quality of life ideally because that's what you want mm-hmm. for them to be able to live you know in in in, in a, having a good quality of life for themselves as they are growing up so healthcare is expensive for autistic kids that is i've i've seen that in in 3D and <laughs> <laughs> and and i don't know how we can be able to make that better honestly i don't yeah. know how we can be able to make that better most hospitals do not even have therapists in there you know to do ot very few hospitals have um h- handling emergencies sometimes you're going to like you know having the person with disabilities card can be helpful but um having people sensitized about handling kids like those because people should be able to respond quickly to uh um, kids or just adults anyone who's dealing with autism should be able to pick some cues and be able to assist them where they need to be assisted before mm. like they feel the need that you know maybe they feel like they are being overwhelmed or get to that point of melting down you know so um even in hospitals where you're getting wait time different places the banking halls mm-hmm. 
um, because autism is not written in the face, and sometimes someone doesn't even have a card, or whoever has a card probably forgot doesn't, it. Yeah, mm-hmm. forgot it. So if people knew that these are cues they need to pick up to be able to make the the experience better, it would be really nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For a mom who's just gotten a diagnosis and mm-hmm. is struggling to process, mm-hmm. what would you tell them? Um, what I tell you, you've just gotten a diagnosis today or recently, and I know it's overwhelming. I know that is not what you wished for, but it's going to get better. It will get better with time. Uh, take it with grace, have patience, don't do not question yourself for anything that you did wrong. In fact, you should be ha- happy that you did everything you could to get a diagnosis for your child. Because that is the very first step for your healing process, you and the baby. This journey is not just for the baby, this journey is also for you. So don't worry, be aware that you also are important in this whole process. Because we need you to be in the best position to be the best mother to your child and um, at the end of the day you being at your greatest is what is important you as a mother are everything to that child if an autistic person can speak right now and tell you what it means for them to have their mother around just seeing their mother it's very important so you need to be in the best shape you need to be in the best position emotionally take time and heal right take time and understand how you're going to be the best you to your child and that starts with you first to be your best version of yourself take heart have grace we have several groups that are going to be supporting of um, your journey this is a journey and um while you're coming into it, don't expect to be looking for a cure. What you need to be expecting is learning to live with it, right, with grace. And you're going to have a good time doing it. You will parent your child with love. You will experience love that you've never experienced before. Don't worry, your child will, all these milestones, they'll be able to reach them. Whichever time that will happen, they will reach them. So you'll be okay. Um, you've mentioned you have a YouTube, Facebook. Mm-hmm. If somebody would like, want to reach you, mm-hmm. where? What's your handle? Oh. So, my handle is I go by Limitless Mom Ke. On YouTube, uh, on Instagram, on TikTok. Um, I need to practice consistency. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very nice by- voice, by the way. I would oh, listen to you all day. Like when you were you. telling us mm-hmm. how to go about uh, processing the diagnosis, I was just like, yeah, it's <laughs> such a calming voice when for podcasts. Oh, you thank should start. you. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I need to. Um, I'm. I'm really happy to be in this platform. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's these platforms that help us get to know. When I watched one of the videos mm-hmm. with gender, I was so happy because this is the information I needed to hear <laughs> when I was... And I got my diagnosis. Wow! Yeah. There's a lot out there yeah. and I feel like uh, people need to get to learn more about and it. And that video was for 2021. Mm. It was for long ago. Yeah. Mm. But, mm. but they say better late than never. Better late than mm. never. Mm. Yeah, I just hope you guys can go check that video out you need to subscribe to her channel yeah, i'll actually tag that video for jane mm-hmm. she's called dr jane i'll tag it here on the um, they call it what the the ta- the, the card there's yeah. a card here. it will just be here on top yeah so that guys can go and so watch guys it. can go watch and mm-hmm. you and you take time sit down and watch like it's a movie because it's <laughs> it has a lot of info every part has yeah. good info yeah yeah i loved it Thank you. Mm. So thank you for granting us. So limitless mom, limitless K-E. mom underscore ke. All the all the platforms. All the platforms. Okay. So mm. so thank you for granting us this interview. We met we met on TikTok. <laughs> so bless TikTok for that. Thank you TikTok. 
I hope uh, yeah. everybody who is watching this, I hope you are learning a thing or two. Mm. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section mm -hmm. or um, contact Aska on the handles. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm sure you will get the more, more information from her, from the channel, for all, the, all the information that we have uh, curated for you. Mm -hmm. So until next time, be safe. Bye. <laughs>